I thought it might be fun to show you what a typical day looks like when I'm looking at my succulents but not necessarily watering them. Okay, now I said that today was not necessarily a day that I was going to water, but you can see here I do actually have some succulents that are due for watering. All the ones with the red circles are over their normal watering schedule. But it's late and I don't feel like watering tonight. And that's the beautiful thing about succulents. They can usually go an extra couple days and sometimes might even appreciate it. So I wanna show you these actually specifically. So as I'm looking through here, um, <laughs> this just needs to be repotted. It's needed that for a long time. And you can see there's still an orange star from a previous video where I showed you how I was gonna decide what to do. Still haven't repotted. Now this little Crassula perforata, it, it could probably use some water. It's a little bit underwatered, but if you can see these sedum clavatum are like about ready to burst. They definitely do not need more water. If we do what someone called the taco test, trying to bend those leaves together, they're nowhere close to that. But this one is. So that's why this arrangement just has a lot of problems, a lot of inconsistencies, and I need to pull them out ah, and repot them. Um, but Oh, look, there's a little baby under there. This is really how it goes. When I look at my succulents, I'm like, oh yeah, I should do something with that. Something else that I noticed earlier today that is interesting is this aloe. I don't think I have the actual name of it, but some aloe hybrid. Also, I love just feeling the leaves. They are spiky, but they're not like, they're not sharp. They're not gonna really poke you, but they look really intense. Anyway, okay, sidetrack there. These. Man, the video doesn't quite show it, but they are really, really thick. And that is not normally what these look like. So this definitely does not need to be watered for a while. I actually wanna chop this one off and see if I can get some new babies to grow. But the color up here though, just looks so cool. You've got this bright blue and these bright pinkish orange kind of coral color up there. I just love the color of this one and it's done really well under the grow light. So I think I might just need to water it a little bit less frequently. It is one that shows as due for watering. So let's see, um, you can see here, it was very underwatered. I need to add a picture of it. Um, so when I first got it, it was very underwatered. I guess I could show it to you bigger. Uh, um, very underwatered, not a lot of color. And then it got more color, but it was still very underwatered. And now if I try and give you that same view, eh, you can't quite tell, but those leaves are very thick and they weren't before. So this one says average watering every 14 days. I will probably drop it back to, I don't know, maybe every three weeks even. Aloes are pretty tough that way. They can go a long time without water. Um, this Gasteria brevifolia, it's just love and life over here. It's very happy as its pot says. These cactus are ones, this is probably, I think I have this and one other succulent from when I was living in Utah, at least that I know for sure I had with the move. And it's done really well. Um, everything's gotten a lot bigger. I love this little paper spine cactus in there. This one, I barely have to water it. Uh, let's see, it's, yeah, it's average watering is every 10 days. And I need to go back and find the original photo of it because it has grown a ton. But I love this one. It's so low maintenance. Like that is the ultimate dream plant for me right there. Barely needs any attention. This one's kind of finicky. I feel like it's looking like it may need some water soon. You can start to see some little wrinkles in the leaves. The top ones are pretty firm still. Ooh, won't focus. But overall, it's pretty good. It'll be fine for another couple days. This aloe pull over here so I can reach it better. It's um it's stumping me. It looked like it was underwatered, so I started watering it more frequently. And now it looked like it was overwatered, so I've cut back on it. Anyway, it's itty bitty, but it's cute, little tiger tooth. So, I think it's probably about due for watering. It'll it could use some more. Oh, we lost a lost a cactus. Oh, sorry, you can't see. The cactus got knocked off. Um, I don't know how to say the Latin name of this one. Anna Camps is sure, 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 sure. Sunrise. I really like these um, 
these rock planters. I got them from Mountain Crest years ago. There's another one with the panda plant in it. But I have a hard time keeping anything alive. I have a feeling it messes with the pH of the soil a little bit. And then also it soaks up all the water. So this will dry out. Like I, I can fill it because it doesn't have a drainage hole. I can fill it all the way to the top. And within like two days, it's totally sucked up and dry. It's crazy. Um, this little zebra plant, I'm trying to get it to grow a little bit more, so I've been watering it a bit more frequently, and it's doing pretty good. It's got a lot of hard water buildup. I think I need to take the advice from the last time I posted about hard water buildup and actually like rinse these with some distilled water, kind of flush them, maybe take a little toothbrush to them, scrub it off, see if I can freshen it up. Um, side note, I could use a toothbrush on the aloe. I would definitely not use it on something tender, well like this or like these crassulas or an echeveria. That is not something that you'd want to do. But on something tough like an aloe or a horthiopsis, you could definitely do that. Here's my little praying mantis and the frizzle sizzle. Still, still going strong. I'm hoping it will put off some new offshoots soon. Um, but I just want to brag for a moment. <laughs> this should not be that big a deal, but Dacephyla minor and I do not have a good track record. So I have now had this one, let's see, October, and now it is the end of March. I've had it for almost six months, and it's still alive. I think, though, I want to put some coconut coir on top here. I just, I don't feel like it's getting enough water. It likes to be kind of clumpy. I almost wonder if I need to put it in. Actually, what I should do is I should transplant it into this pot with just coconut coir and see if it does better there. Cause I feel like it likes a little bit more water. It tends to prefer a bit more organic soil. And I think it likes having a little bit more room to grow. Although I have seen it in really tight compact arrangements and it continues to grow. So I don't know. It's just not one that is agreeing with me at the moment. And then there's this sad little echeveria. Actually, let me back up. It is, it is working, it's still alive, so there's that. But um, yeah, this estuary will hopefully start to recover. It was a mealybug infested one. I finally got rid of all the mealybugs. Pretty sure they're all gone. And now we just wait, wait for it to grow. Anyway, so that's what it looks like <laughs> when I sit and stare at my succulents for 10 minutes and the things that go through my mind when I'm not watering or a lot of this will come up when I am watering too. And um, I'm working on getting a feature added to the Succulent Tracker app where you can actually set a schedule for repotting. So that way, like with both of these, like they should have been repotted months ago, but I just haven't gotten to it. And I know they need to be repotted, but I'm wondering if having that reminder on the phone, in the app, every time I water might help. So. That is coming soon. I don't know when yet, but it will be coming eventually. So there you go. All of the thoughts that I think when I go through each section of my succulents. And that's just one little section of, you know, the giant plant stand. And it takes a long time to water, but I've gotten a lot better about watering a few every day instead of doing like a big mass watering that takes like three to four hours because that's exhausting and overwhelming. So I've used the tracker app a lot more, um, a lot more consistently to actually like follow schedules and pay attention to the needs of the succulents instead of just like flat watering them every two to three weeks. Um, this has worked a lot better. That's what the app was designed for, for you to put in a schedule for an individual succulent and then water it roughly on that schedule. You do still have to pay attention to the signs that your succulent's giving you. And if you're not sure what it looks like if a succulent is overwatered or underwatered, um, there is a link in the description to get our free watering cheat sheet. And it'll show you those signs that a succulent is over or underwatered. And that way you don't have to rely exactly on a schedule, but you can use it as a guideline to get you started and then make your decision to water or not based on what you're seeing with your succulent. So go ahead and grab that there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.